Alright, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look at doing for CSS what we just did for JS, splitting and dynamically delivering component sized chunks for each page. We're going to start where we left off in the last episode. If you need to catch up, get checkout CSS chunks. So we've done most of the work to get us there. The only thing left to do is to hook up two packages by the same engineer who gave us the React Universal Component Package. In our terminal, let's npm install webpack flush chunks and extract CSS chunks webpack plugin. Okay, we're going to deliver the component CSS in tandem with the component JS. To illustrate, let's make a directory source CSS and then we're going to touch source CSS about CSS. Now let's go into main CSS and take the profile here out of main CSS and we'll paste it into about CSS. Now let's import this file into our about.js. All right, now in webpack dev client and webpack prod client, we're going to switch out the CSS solution. All right, so now in webpack dev client, let's require extract CSS chunks. Now instead of the style loader, we can say extract CSS chunks loader. Finally, down here in the plugins, we'll do a extract CSS chunks and give it one option, hot true. Don't forget your commas. Now hot true is going to allow for hot module reloading in development. All right, so now for the prod client, it's going to be the same. Let's make sure we take out our mini CSS extract plugin. Down here in the plugins, Let's do the extract CSS chunks with no options. Let's grab this from the dev and put it in prod. Down here, instead of the mini CSS extract plugin, we'll just do extract CSS chunks loader. So this is very similar for both the dev and the prod client. All right, let's give it a shot. npm run dev. All right, we can see the CSS coming down. We need to hook up the Webpack flush chunks package. So back in render.js, let's import flush chunk names from React Universal Component slash server. And we'll import flush chunks from Webpack flush chunks. All right, so now inside of this middleware function, we need to do things in a specific order. Flush chunks is going to give us the final link and script tags that we're gonna need for our particular route. Before it knows how to do that, we have to render our routes. So we have to take this render to string, everything inside here, and cut it out. And type app inside there. Now let's create an app variable and set it to render to string. All right, so now that's been rendered and we know which routes we're using. So let's get those routes. We're gonna pull JS styles and CSS hash from flush chunks. Now flush chunks needs two things. It needs a stats file from Webpack. Now we don't have that yet, but we're gonna pass it in in a second. The second thing it needs is an object of options. It wants to know the chunk names. And it's gonna get that from flush chunk names. Which we imported right here from React Universal Component Server. So if this is run after this is run, we're good. And these things will be filled with the appropriate chunks. So now let's not forget about this stats file. Where does this stats file come into play? Well, it's an express. So development is done for us by the Webpack hot server middleware. But in production, we want to use that stats file inside of our render. We've kind of set it up perfectly to get that going. What we want to do is we can pull it out of this stats object here. And we'll say, 
client stats equals stats to JSON children zero. Because this is zero, this will be zero. We want the client stats only. So now we're going to pass those in. We're going to say render. We'll pass that in in an object. And now in here, we can pull this out and use it right here. So the last thing we need to do is we need to use these three variables inside of our template. So instead of main CSS, let's just put styles. And instead of these two, we'll put JS and CSS hash. And I'll show you what CSS hash does in a second. So if we came in and created new CSS files, say article CSS and gallery CSS. Let's restart the server. All right, you can see that they're being rendered. They're not being rendered yet oh, because we haven't imported them into the appropriate component. Let's do article here. We'll do gallery as well. All right, so this is going to rebuild. So now we have about switch to article. We have article, gallery, gallery comes in. We reload. It's kind of funny. You can you can see there's no H1 styling here on gallery either. But then once we hit about, the H1 styling kicks in. It's kind of cool. All right, so the last thing I want to do is I want to add a bit of logging to our production output. So we're running the Webpack function. We get the stats. So now we can console log the stats. We want to say to string this time. And inside there we'll do one option, which is colors true. So stats has a two string and a two JSON. It's kind of cool. So let's do npm run prod. Nice, now we have our output. Very cool. So now when we go to our browser, we load about, we notice that the source has loading where the SSR used to be. That's no good. We have our chunks now. We have our CSS hash. Everything is defined in here, but now our SSR isn't working. Now this is kind of a tricky bug, but what it comes down to is that in your Webpack dev server, in the plugins, we're going to add a new plugin, Webpack Optimize. It's called the Limit Chunk Count Plugin. And it takes one option, max chunks. We're going to say one max chunks. So that's in dev server. Now let's do it in prod server. Good to go. All right, so now let's rerun this. And now when we reload, you see we have our SSR again. Very cool. So that's prod, now dev, just to round it out. So that works too. So let's go back to dev for a second, delete that. It'll rebuild here. And now we can see loading once again. So the limit chunk count plugin is very important for SSR. All right, sweet. So now we have everything we need. We have a full working server-side rendering, chunk splitting, badass boilerplate that we've made ourselves. We should be very proud of this accomplishment. This is very cool. So that's it for this section. In the next section, we're gonna put all of this to work by enhancing our blog site with a multi-domain feature. So we're gonna have multiple different blogs for different domains up here in the URL. I can't wait for that section. Uh, it's definitely the point and purpose of this class is to get to a point where we can run multiple apps on one process using many domains. It's a great way to start off your company. If you need the final code for this, get check out CSS Chunks Final. All right, I'll see you in the next section.